Well, let us continue with uh, our discussion of this uh, Arsila Ascoli theorem. Okay. Uh, so, you know the, uh, the, the, uh, the situation is that we are trying to understand what compactness means for uh, functions. Okay. Uh, basically, we want to understand compactness for families of meromorphic functions defined on a domain in the complex plane okay. um, or in the extended complex plane. Okay. But then uh, we want to get some uh, idea about uh, what compactness means uh, from basic topology. Okay. So, uh, as I was telling you, um, suppose you are having a, 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 a topological space, you have the notion of compactness okay. and if the topological space is, uh, is a metric space, then compactness is the same as uh, uh, it is equivalent to sequential compactness and it is also equivalent to the uh, uh, Bolzano wear stress property. The sequential compactness is the property that every sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay. The Bolzano wear stress property is a property that every infinite subset has a limit point okay. and these three are equivalent. Right. And uh, then uh, there is also this, uh, this, this implication that if you have a compact uh, sub subset, it is always closed and bounded if you are in a metric space. Okay. But the converse is not true. So, if you take R infinity. Uh, you can easily look at the unit ball uh, in R infinity, the closed unit ball, it will be closed and bounded, but it will not be compact because you can write out uh, a sequence which does not admit any convergence of sequence, uh, namely the sequence consti consisting of 1 at the ith place and 0 elsewhere. Okay. Uh, any two terms of this sequence differ by uh, a distance of root 2. Okay. Uh, are separated by a distance of root 2 and therefore, this sequence cannot, cannot have a convergence of sequence okay. because the terms of the sequence do not come, you cannot find a subsequence uh, whose terms, uh, whose, whose elements uh, come closer and closer together. Okay. So, uh, but of course, in any, uh, in any metric space, compactness implies closeness and boundedness the converse is not true, the converse is true for Euclidean spaces and in fact, uh, uh, I even told you that uh, if you take a Banach space, uh, the condition that it is finite dimensional is equivalent, every closed subspace, uh, every closed bounded subspace is compact if you want to put that condition, then the Banach space has to be finite dimensional, it cannot happen if it is an infinite dimensional Banach space. Okay. So, um, now you see, all right, so the, the, the uh, so, there is a related notion, there is this notion of total boundedness okay, which uh, is implied by compactness. All right. Total boundedness is that is basically the property that you know you can cover the whole space by uh, open balls of a fixed radius no matter how uh, small the radius is, but the point is of course, by finitely many such uh, open balls. Okay. So, given any positive radius epsilon. I should be able to find just finitely many open balls of radius epsilon whose union is the whole space and I should I should be able to do this for every epsilon greater than 0. This is total boundedness is a very strong form of boundedness, this implies boundedness okay. and uh, in fact, uh, a space that is uh, totally bounded is actually even uh, it even has a finite diameter okay, because the diameter of the space can be compared to the diameter of uh, uh, this finite collection of centers of these open disks which is called a net, uh, an epsilon net if the radius you are talking about is epsilon. Okay. And uh, uh, the point is that uh, 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 total boundedness uh, itself uh, though it is a strong form of boundedness, total boundedness is not enough to give compactness. Okay. Uh, what you have to add to it is completeness. So, if you have uh, something that is uh, complete and totally bounded, a metric space that is complete and totally bounded, then it is compact. Okay. And uh, uh, so, that is the, uh, so that is another equivalent version of compactness. So, you know, so you, we check uh, to check compactness, either you check the, uh, the abstract definition of compactness, which is very hard. You have to take an arbitrary open cover and you have to show that there is a finite sub cover that is very difficult in, print, in practice. Okay. Uh, and 
probably if you are given a particular open cover, uh, a specific open cover maybe you, mi you might be able to because of your knowledge of geometry and topology you might be able to extract a finite sub cover, but you cannot do this in an, uh, in an arbitrary way. Uh, 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 so, it is abstract okay. trying to get hold of a finite sub cover from an uh, any given open cover is a very abstract thing it is not easy to check. Okay. So, we end up checking sequential compactness okay. namely you take a sequence and show that there is a convergent subsequence. If you check that then that is equivalent to compactness. The other thing you can check is that uh, the space has uh, the metric space has the Bolzano Weierstrass property show that every infinite subset has a limit point okay. uh, um, and of course if you are uh, in uh, if you are working with subsets of Euclidean space you know what to do you will just check that the subset uh, is uh, that you want to say is compact is both closed and bounded. So, there is not much to do. All right, but point is that, and of course now there's also this new, there's also this extra condition that you know, uh, if you uh, want to check a space is uh, 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 compact, you check that it is complete and it is totally bounded. Okay, and uh, uh, of course completeness is the is the condition that every Cauchy sequence converges. Okay, uh, that is uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well. Uh, whether that can be easily checked or not depends on the particular case you are looking at okay it's also not so easy okay and uh, the other thing is uh, total boundedness and that's also very abstract okay total boundedness is a very abstract thing you have to say that you know you can find an epsilon net for every epsilon greater than 0 and that's uh, so you have to produce an epsilon net for every epsilon greater than 0 and epsilon net is those finitely many points in the space centered at which if you take open balls of radius epsilon these balls will cover the whole space okay you have to you have to show the existence of those finitely many points that epsilon net and you should do this for every epsilon it's not an easy thing to do all right so these are the various versions of compactness that we have but you know we are interested in compactness of functions okay now for functions what is it that uh, what is it that is easy to uh, you know verify Normally what you what what do you normally easily verify about functions you verify continuity okay you verify differentiability you verify boundedness of a function okay try to find a constant which bounds the modulus of the function values okay so these are the things that you can verify okay so you need something uh, in the in, in the in the situation of functions if you are working with a space of functions then you need uh, better uh, conditions for compactness and that is where the Arzela Ascoli theorem st steps in. So, uh, so basically you know we are looking at a compact metric space x okay. So, x is a compact metric space and um, so uh, let me go back to what I wrote last le lecture x is a compact metric space uh, and uh, uh, let, let me let me use a different color now um, x is a compact metric space. Uh, and it's and uh, uh, you are looking at a uh, I am looking at a certain I am looking at this uh, 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 CXR which is the uh, you know it's the Banach algebra it's a complete norm linear space of continuous functions on x with values in uh, the real numbers okay and you can you could have also taken uh, with values in the complex numbers you would get the uh, the other Banach algebra CXC okay. And the question is that you want to, um, and of course, mind you, uh, <coughs> uh, since x is compact and a continuous function on a compact set is uniformly continuous and always attains its bounds, uh, every function that you that we are worried about is already uniformly continuous, and uh, it's bounded. Okay, so uh, normally, uh, when you write C X R or C X C, you rest, you mean also not only just continuous functions but also continuous bounded functions okay but here boundedness is automatic because x is compact all right so uh, what i want i want uh, i want to take a close subset of uh, uh, i want to look at a subset of uh, functions i want to look at a family of functions or a collection of functions okay which you think of as a subset of this space of functions cxr or cxc and i want to say that it is compact that's my aim i want to get a nice condition to say that 
a collection of functions is compact okay. Now uh, you know since we are in a metric space something that has to be compact a subset has to be compact means that it has to be both closed and bounded. So certainly the subset to begin with should be closed okay. So we put this precondition that it is already a closed set if it is not a closed set it is not going to be compact because compact implies it is closed okay and of course it has to be bounded because I told you that in any metric space a compact sub subset is always closed and bounded okay. So uh, if you start with a closed subset A uh, the, uh, the condition that it is compact is uh, equivalent to it being bounded and the here is the extra condition the extra condition is equicontinuity okay. So equicontinuity is something that uh, 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 that helps us to uh, uh, get hold of compactness right. So you know I want to see at this point I, uh, uh, I want at this point say the following thing I want to say that if you look at it from the viewpoint of total boundedness okay then you see uh, to say that A is uh, uh, compact it is enough to say that A is totally bounded okay because if A is uh, totally bounded alright then A is also complete uh, not then I mean A is already complete because A is a closed subset of a complete metric space so it is complete and if you add total boundedness together with completeness you will get compactness because that is another characterization of compactness I told you okay. So if A is totally bounded then I know it is compact okay. So the only issue is with uh, uh, replacing this total boundedness with something else and I told you this total boundedness is uh, not so easy to verify because you have to show the existence of an epsilon net for every epsilon it is not practical okay. So uh, whereas uh, total boundedness uh, being uh, difficult to verify uh, uh, we, we have boundedness is easier to verify okay. So you from the total boundedness you remove the total and you just put boundedness which is an easy thing to verify for functions okay. And you because you have made the condition weaker from total boundedness to boundedness you have to put something else to make it strong enough to get compactness to give compactness and that strong enough thing is the equicontinuity okay. So I will tell you what this what this equicontinuity is okay. So, uh, so basically the idea is very very simple the idea is see if you want function a function to be continuous at a point then what you do is you say that uh, that is the usual uh, you know you have the usual definition of the epsilon delta uh, definition of continuity at a point and what is that uh, give me an epsilon greater than 0 I can find a delta such that whenever the uh, vari uh, whenever the point is within uh, a delta of the given uh, particular point then the function value is within an epsilon of the image. Uh, of the function value at that point okay. Now so the, the, the whole uh, issue here is that if you change the point okay so, the, so, so, so uh, you are looking at continuity at a point for a given epsilon you have to verify it okay. Now the delta that you get will depend on the epsilon of course because if you make epsilon smaller you might expect that the delta must become smaller okay and so the delta depends on the epsilon the delta also depends on the point and the delta is particular to that function okay. So the delta depends on three things okay delta depends on three things if you are so you know uh, so let me write this down so what is this equicontinuity? So you see what is the usual continuity usual continuity at let us say x0 for f what is this given uh, epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that whenever the distance between uh, 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 x and x0 uh, is less than delta uh, then we have that the uh, distance between uh, fx uh, uh, and fx0 
uh, is less than epsilon. This is the usual uh, good old uh, definition of uh, uh, continuity, epsilon delta definition of continuity. And you see the point here is that of course this, uh, this the first d that I use in d of x comma x naught is the, is the metric on the space uh, on which the function is defined. Uh, whose points are x and x0, x0 is a fixed point, x is a variable point. Okay. So basically this dx, x0 less than delta refers to, you know basically it refers to all the points uh, in, an, in a delta uh, open ball centered at x0 in your space. Okay. And what you are saying is that whenever a point, whenever you take a point in a delta open ball centered at x0, then its image is in an epsilon open ball centered at fx0, that is what you are saying. Okay. So, the image of this delta open ball under f goes into this epsilon open ball uh, centered at fx, uh, centered at fx0, okay. that is what uh, usual continuity is. But the point is that this epsilon, you see the, 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 the given an epsilon, okay, delta depends on what? See, it depends on uh, of course uh, 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 epsilon, it depends on x0 and you know it depends on f also. Of course, uh, we are looking at a single function, uh, so we do we forget the function because if you are dealing with only one function there is no confusion, but if you are looking at a family of functions, then you will have different functions f. Okay. And as you change the function for the same epsilon and even for the same point, okay, if you have family of functions which are continuous at a point x0. Okay. Then for that family of functions even if you take a single epsilon the same delta will not work, the delta will change with the function okay. and of course the delta will change with the point. Now equicontinuity is the fact that you are is, is, the, is the condition that you know you are able to get a delta that works for all functions in one stroke that is equicontinuity. Okay. So a, a, collection, a collection of functions uh, of functions. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, A, so let me call it as A, uh, is called uh, equicontinuous at x0, you know, if uh, given epsilon greater than 0, we can get a delta that works for all functions in that collection that is equicontinuity. You get a common delta that is equicontinuity all right. And well uh, uh, and of course if you say that a family is equicontinuous uh, on a subset of the space if it is equicontinuous at every point of the space. Okay. So, uh, you make a point wise definition and then you say that uh, this definition holds uh, if it holds on a, holds for a subset of points if it holds for every point in that subset. Okay. So, uh, this is just like saying that uh, function is continuous uh, on a set if it is continuous at every point of the set, it is like that. So, uh, uh, A is equicontinuous. at uh, uh, or let me say on uh, on uh, let me say uh, subset y in x if it is or, or let me use x prime if it is equicontinuous uh, at each point of x prime okay so so, this equicontinuity is basically if you want to you know think about it in a very simple way, equicontinuity is given an epsilon you find a delta that works for all functions that is the point. Okay. A single delta will work for your epsilon for every function in your collection then that collection is called equicontinuous an equicontinuous collection or equicontinuous family of functions. Okay. And what the arzil ascoli theorem says is that well the arzil ascoli theorem says that if you put equicontinuity together with boundedness then 
that is good enough to say that your collection is compact. Okay. So, compactness of a family of functions is equivalent to that family being equicontinuous and bounded and mind you this is a much much nicer condition than total boundedness. Okay. Equicontinuity is uh, it is a it is a kind of continuity that you have to check it is just continuity you have to check but make sure that you get one delta for all the functions for a given for any for a given epsilon. Okay. That is like checking continuity and that should be far more easier checking boundedness is not a uh, it should not be a big problem. Okay. So, these are all things that we normally check for functions, but given a family of functions you never uh, it is not common that you check total boundedness, total boundedness is you have to find finitely given an epsilon you have to find finitely many functions. So, that the distance of any function is within an epsilon to one of these finitely many functions you have to find this epsilon net that is not easy and that is not common okay. it is not practical. So, Arsil Askal theorem helps you by saying that well you want to check a family of uh, functions is compact do not do much uh, you just check that it is bounded check it is equicontinuous and you are done. Okay. So, uh, I, I just wanted to you know uh, uh, indicate something about the uh, about this this equivalence of compactness with boundedness and equicontinuity because it is uh, uh, because it is a very very fundamental thing and you need to know uh, how things work. Okay. So, so let me uh, so let me do the following thing I will I will again change color and use uh, a different color. So, I will say proof of Arzela Ascoli. So, uh, so let me go through the proof because I want you to understand the ideas involved. Okay. Um, you will also get familiar with uh, all these notions of uh, total boundedness epsilon net and uh, how uh, equicontinuity is actually used. Okay. So, uh, so start with uh, a closed uh, start with the closed A inside uh, uh, C x r okay. start with the closed set uh, what do you have to show you have to show that uh, A is compact if and only if it is bounded and equicontinuous. Okay. So, assume uh, A is compact assume A is compact all right. Now, what do you have to show? Uh, so, this is one way of the theorem you have to show that if it is compact it is uh, bounded and it is equicontinuous. Okay. Uh, I told you that uh, in a metric space uh, a subset is compact implies it is both closed and bounded. Okay. So, it is bounded. Okay. Compactness always implies closeness and boundedness in a metric space. Right. So, uh, and mind you that is true only for metric spaces if you go to ar arbitrary topological spaces things can become very bad you can have a compact subspace of a compact topological space which is not closed okay it's a, it's a, it can behave terribly you can have a whole space which is compact you can have a subspace which is compact but the subspace is not closed in the whole space that this can happen for an arbitrary topological space it cannot happen for a metric space for a metric space compactness always forces closeness and boundedness so that House of spaces also, house of spaces if you want, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you see, um, uh, so assume uh, A is compact, uh, then uh, A is uh, uh, A is bounded, uh, bounded, okay. Uh, because compactness will imply closeness and boundedness it is all A is already closed okay, but we want boundedness that that is implied by compactness. Uh, we only have to show that A is equicontinuous okay. uh, we only need to show A is equicontinuous okay. that is what you have to show. So, you see, uh, so incidentally let me make a remark here uh, to uh, in, in this case we are anyway going to uh, the way we prove the Arzela Ascoli theorem is by using the, the other version 
uh, of compact characterization of compactness which is compactness is equivalent to A being totally bounded. Okay, this total boundedness will come into the picture okay, at least in the proof okay, that is the key tool uh, uh, that uh, helps in the proof of the Arzal Ascoli theorem. So, if you think of uh, uh, since if you think of that given that A is compact I know it is totally bounded and I told you totally bounded also is a strong form of boundedness so it implies boundedness totally bounded is the condition that there is an epsilon net for every epsilon okay and uh, you know that the diameter of the uh, space can be compared to the diameter of any epsilon net okay to within an epsilon to within an epsilon okay or two epsilon okay so therefore a is always bounded in fact it has finite diameter all right uh, we you only need to show that a is equicontinuous and for the equicontinuity also you use the fact that it is totally bounded okay so uh, since uh, a is totally bounded Uh, uh, well, uh, A is uh, 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 A, A admits an epsilon net for every epsilon greater than 0. Okay. So, here I am using the fact that uh, compactness implies total boundedness, right? And compactness implies total boundedness is a very, very, uh, it is a very simple thing, there is nothing complicated about it. Okay. Basically, uh, uh, what you are saying is that you should cover the space by finitely many open balls of a fixed radius okay. uh, that radius being epsilon and that is very that is very easy to see because if you give me if you take all open balls of radius epsilon that is an that is a cover for the space. You allow every point of the space to be a center and you take the collection of all open balls of radius epsilon that is obviously an open cover for the space and if you know it is compact it has to admit a finite cover and that finite cover if you take the centers that will give you the epsilon net that you want. Okay. So, it is that compactness implies total boundedness is absolutely easy to see. Okay. So, there is a there is an epsilon net. Okay. So, uh, so let uh, epsilon greater than 0 be given and uh, let us uh, take uh, and uh, uh, so here is a uh, you know this is the uh, this is the kind of thing you fiddle with to get epsilon finally in your answer. So you know usually the idea is that uh, you use a triangle inequality you know finally all these epsilon arguments they uh, finally end up with a triangle inequality. If you are breaking uh, uh, a distance into two pieces then you try to and you want that distance to be less than epsilon you know you try to make each piece less than epsilon by 2. If you are breaking it into 3 pieces then you know you make each piece less than epsilon by 3. So, what I am going to do is I am not going to take an epsilon net I am going to take an epsilon by 3 net. Okay. So, uh, so let epsilon greater than 0 be given and let us take an epsilon by 3 net uh, for uh, A. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means that uh, so uh, there exist functions. Uh, f1 etc up to fm which are in a such that well the uh, uh, any function in a uh, uh, such that for any function in a there exists an i uh, such that i with uh, the distance between uh, f i and f less than epsilon by 3. Okay. So, this is what epsilon net means. Basically, you cover all points of the space by looking at uh, uh, open balls of radius epsilon by 3 centered at the points which correspond to the epsilon by 3 net. Right? This is this is uh, this is what you get. Now, I want you to uh, you know uh, at this point you know I want you to remember what is this distance here? See this distance is the distance in uh, this distance is the distance in the in the Banach algebra C x r okay. it is mind you all these uh, what is a? a is a subset of C x r and C x r uh, are 
you know functions which are continuous functions on x uh, real valued functions okay and uh, uh, so uh, what is the uh, and of course x is compact x is compact so these all all these functions are bounded okay continuous function on a compact set is bounded and in fact it is uniformly continuous and it attains its bounds right so uh, so what is the distance the distance is the supremum norm so what is this 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 quantity is supremum as x belongs to capital x as x varies over capital x of uh, uh, you know mod of fi of x minus f of x this is what it is okay in fact it is actually it is precisely norm of fi minus f that is what the distance is the distance between fi and f is just norm of fi minus f and the norm is a soup norm so you calculate fi minus f at each point and then you take the mod of that and then you take the supremum okay and this should be less than epsilon by 3 this is what you have okay this is what you have now you see uh, now we are kind of uh, in more or less in in a very good sh in good shape because see now you can get equicontinuity very easily so let us check equicontinuity at a point okay so let let us check uh, let us check equicontinuity at x0 in x let us check equicontinuity there okay then what is what is it that is going to happen well uh, uh, what do you have to check for equicontinuity uh, you have to find a delta such that whenever uh, 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 mod x minus uh, whenever the distance between x minus x no, x and x naught is less than delta okay uh, the the distance between f x and f x naught uh, is less than epsilon and this should work for all f in your family a in your collection a okay so uh, given uh, uh, for the given for the given epsilon greater than 0 we seek a delta greater than 0 such that uh, mod uh, I, I, I keep seeing mod because uh, you know at the back of the uh, at the back of one's mind one keeps thinking of uh, Euclidean space but it is not mod you should replace it with d so the distance between uh, x and x naught uh, less than delta implies that mod f x uh, 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 the 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 uh, the distance between f x and f x naught uh, which is mod f x minus f x naught is less than epsilon and this should work for all f in a this is what you want all right so the uh, so you see how do you do this the idea is very very simple there is this on the one hand you have an x which is a variable point you have this point x naught okay and uh, you have an arbitrary f all right and you will have to now uh, connect that arbitrary f in a with these particular fi's which are the elements of the epsilon net okay so you do that by uh, uh, you know uh, basically by using a triangle inequality to break down some distance into three pieces okay so what you do is that well you write this mod fx minus fx naught you you write this as you know uh, I have already told you that given this f there is an fi with the property that uh, uh, the norm of fi minus f is less than epsilon by 3 that is already there so use that fi so you write this as modulus of you know uh, uh, well um, f of x minus fi of x uh, plus mod fi of x minus fi of x naught plus modulus of uh, so I should put less than or equal to uh, modulus of f i of x naught minus f i uh, f of x naught this is what I will have to do okay so I introduce this uh, this f i cleverly f i values at x and f i values at x naught to break this and then what happens is that you see uh, the uh, you know f for any x in x okay for any x in x the 
uh, modulus of fix minus fx is always less than epsilon by 3. So, the point is that this fellow here this is less than or equal this is less than epsilon by 3 okay and so is this fellow here this is also less than epsilon by 3 okay I have to be worried only about the central term this is the only term I have to worry about that that is I cannot apply uh, uh, that epsilon by 3 bound to that because the points are different the function is the same it is the same f i okay it is the same f i but the points are x and x naught whereas in the first term the point is x the third term the point is x naught the, the term in the middle has two points with the same function okay. Uh, what do I do that what, what do I do here so here what I do is basically I, I use the fact that all these f i's are all uniformly continuous in fact they are all continuous they are, they are continuous on a compact set so they are uniformly continuous so because they are uniformly continuous I can make sure that you know if I if I choose a delta sufficiently small whenever the distance between x and x naught is less than delta I can make the central term less than epsilon by 3 I can do this in fact I can simply do it because of continuity of f i at x naught but the point is that I can do this uh, uh, for all f i at the same time because there are only finitely many f i's okay there are only finitely many f i's see for e. Uh, if I want f i x minus f i x naught to be less than epsilon by 3 I can of course choose a delta such, uh, uh, I can find a delta for which whenever the distance between x and x naught is less than delta then mod f i x minus uh, 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 f i x naught is less than epsilon by 3 I can do this because of continuity of f i at, uh, at x naught okay but then uh, this delta may depend on the f i okay and if I change the i to other f i's okay then the delta will change but there are only finitely many of these f i's so I could have taken the minimum of them and that would work for all f i's all the all the all the elements of the epsilon net in one go all right and mind you uh, you could even forget the point x naught that is because all these functions that we are studying they are all uniformly continuous okay so there is also uh, you can you can not only do this uh, you can you, you, you can not only do this uh, for all the f i's because they are finitely many you can also do it irrespective of the point x naught because uh, of uniform continuity that is because all the f i's uh, all the functions we are considering are continuous functions on a compact space and when when you have continuous functions on a compact space you get uniform continuity uniform continuity is that whenever the distance between source points is less than a delta then the distance between the image points is less than epsilon it does not matter what the source points are the only condition is uh, they have to be within a delta you can find such a delta that is equi that, that is uniform continuity okay. So, uh, so, so let me write here uh, can find a delta greater than 0 such that mod f i of x minus so let me write fj of x minus fj of x naught is less than uh, epsilon by 3 if d of x comma x naught is less than delta uh, because for, and for all j so let me write for all j uh, because of continuity of f j at x naught and and the fact that there are only finitely many only finitely many uh, f j ok I can do this right not only that I can do more in fact because all of these are uniformly continuous I can do this irrespective of x naught okay I can even forget the x naught okay in fact since the x is compact and uh, uh, f j are uniformly continuous so I am abbreviating it to u f l y for uniformly uniformly continuous 
we can do this for any x naught ok. So, you can find given an epsilon you can find a delta which neither depends on the f nor does it depend on the x x naught ok. So, you have verified equicontinuity in a very in a uniform way ok and that is how so you have got equicontinuity that is it you have found a delta that works for every f ok. So, thus a is equicontinuous ok. So, so the moral of the story is uh, uh, we, have, we, have, we, have, we are able to see one way why if you have a compact space of functions then these functions must form an equicontinuous family ok. So, uh, uh, equicontinuity is something that is uh, uh, is very is very very important and mind you uh, uh, I will have to prove the other way of the theorem, uh, but then uh, before I do that which I will do in the next lecture what I will now say is I will tell you why this is called uh, why Azela Asclos theorem is sometimes called the uniform boundedness principle it is because of the following reason uh, you see the condition is that uh, a closed subset of functions is compact if and only if it is bounded and equicontinuous ok. Now, this bounded is actually bounded with respect to the metric on the space of functions and that is that is given by the soup norm ok and boundedness under the soup norm ok is actually uniform boundedness. It means see what does boundedness normally mean it means that you are able to find an, uh, a positive constant such that the modulus of the function values at all points is bounded above by this positive con constant ok. But of course, this positive constant <coughs> would change if you change the function. So, if you take different functions in a family each function may individually be bounded, but you may not be able to find a common bound for all the functions in the, fa in the, in the family ok. And that is what uniform boundedness does it gives you a common bound for all functions in your family or collection or subset. Okay. So, boundedness in CXR actually means uniform boundedness and Arzela Ascoli's theorem is just that if you have a uniformly bounded family which is equicontinuous then it is compact and conversely that is what Arzela Ascoli's theorem is okay. and that is why it is called the uniform boundedness principle ok. So, I will continue in the next lecture and try to tell you uh, the other way of the the other way of the proof ok.